Dear all, today I am here to make a request from all of you. But before that request, I want to speak about something. Remember how as parents, we do everything in our power to ensure that our little bundle of joy is protected in our arms. We wrap our bodies and souls around our babies so that no hurt or disease could affect them. Some of us even sanitize our hands regularly every time we pick up our babies from the cradle. And then comes a day when we allow those little ones to walk away from the comfort of our laps to their preschools. With tears in our eyes, we wave them goodbye. And our heart beaming with pride, we watch them go in their cute little uniform outside the gate of that preschool, a haven we have chosen carefully when no harm can done to our babies when no one can touch them, where they can learn to achieve their dreams. But imagine, what would you feel as a doting father and mothers when one day your three-year-old comes and tells you that her private parts are hurting. They are hurting because someone in that preschool has unsafely touched them there in their private parts. How will you feel as a parent when your four-year-old comes and tells you that the caretaker uncle has touched his VV place, his susu place, his urine place, which is penis. How will you feel as a parent when you suddenly realize that the rashes around your child's genital area that your child was complaining about and you just put an ointment there a few weeks back are actually the result of constant sexual molestation that your child was going through in the school and you were unaware of. And how will you feel as a mother or father who noticed that their child comes home every day in a different cloth regularly? You will never ever imagine in your dreams that something horrendous happened each time those clothes were changed. And how will you feel when you realized that all of this has ha happened in the same preschool, the haven which you have chosen carefully for your child where no harm could touch them? where they can learn to achieve their dreams. You will feel cheated. You will feel disgusted. You will feel ashamed seething, vengeful, unforgiving to yourself and world. Your world will come crashing down under your feet. You will feel so many negative emotions that it will be difficult for you to breathe. You will feel the burden of your own guilt for that each day when you pushed your child to go to the school when she was saying no and howling and resisting it because you never knew that someone can touch a child inappropriately. 
that someone is capable of molesting a child sexually, no child deserves to go through this pain and trauma of sexual molestation. No parent deserves to feel this way and go through this pain. Yet, this unimaginable, unfathomable, heinous crime of mass molestation of children has recently happened in one of the branded preschool of India, Bangalore. When most of the children keep silent about such incident, and all of you who have gone through this incident must be knowing what I'm talking about. We don't speak about it. We keep it to ourselves. But there were seven brave children who chose to shatter this silence and break the taboo. They were just three and four years old. They didn't even have the vocabulary to say that I was sexually molested. And later, we came to know that there are actually 30 such children who have been molested in this school. They told this horror story to their parents, police and magis magistrate again and again about how they were every day sexually molested by the school caretaker in that branded preschool of Bangalore. And yet, the atrocity is that the school's, school authority doesn't want to take a responsibility of it. In fact, they denied the charges initially. They dismissed these children initially. And they are still roaming free. Sadly, out of those 30 parents, only seven parents dared to come forward and fight it out through the system while fighting their own inner emotional demons. These seven brave parents of seven brave children chose to break the silence, to set the example and fight the system of a school to ensure that preschools are safe in future for the kids who cannot even speak full sentences. These seven parents chose not to succumb to the pressure because there are millions of toddlers who go to schools, not only in India, throughout the world. They approached a very capable lawyer who agreed to fight the case on behalf of these children and on behalf of these parents on a very subsidized fee so that the justice is served. However, most of these parents still do not have the bandwidth to even pay that subsidized fee because they have already invested their life saving to give the best to their children, the best of education, the best of food, the best of healthcare. And we all do that. We all know how it feels to have a bank account which is beyond exhausted. Last night, I received a text from one such brave mother. She was on the verge of giving up. She was breaking from inside. She said she cannot afford it anymore financially and emotionally. She told me that the parents are broke. They do not have any more money. The initial legal processes and medical bills have consumed it all. As a mother and as a humanitarian, I cannot let this happen. Sanrakshan that bears the flag of protection of children and women cannot let this happen. I cannot let that mother break and go down. Our children have spoken once about this, what has happened to them. And if we do not stand by them, they will never speak again. And we as fellow human beings cannot let this happen. In a country like India, Singapore dollar 20,000 is a huge amount of money for those who are not earning big time. But all of us 
who come from developed countries earning in dollars and cents, if we can contribute a little fraction of our monthly earning as an encouragement to these parents to continue to fight the injustice, we will be nurturing these resilient human spirit. We will be changing the history and we will be positively transforming the lives of those seven children who chose to shatter the silence and speak. I know that some of you might think this is not my problem. This is not my child. This is not my country. So why bother? But let me tell you, you know, down the lane, 10 years from now, it will not matter which country you lived in. It will not matter which car you drove. It will not matter which first world problem you solved. And it will not matter how much money you saved in your bank account. What will actually matter is that you made this world a better place because you transformed a child's life who chose to spoke for himself and herself. So I pray and humbly respect and beg to all of you to please help raise 20,000 Singapore dollars towards seven registered court case file so that these parents can continue to fight and so that the justice is served. Let us keep these parents and children in our prayer and let us all together set an intention that the justice is served to these children and parents. A lot of love and of a lot of gratitude to all of you from my side, to those who resonate with this cause, to those who want to donate to us, to these parents and to those who want to keep these parents and children in their blessing. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much for supporting this cause. Lots of love.